फोर्थ डे ऑफ श्रवणोत्सव सो टुडे वी हैव स्पीकर्स लाइक हिज ओलिनेस भक्ति विघ्न विनाशक नरसिंह स्वामी महाराज एंड ट्वेल्व ओ क्लॉक टू वन थर्टी हरि लीला प्रभु एंड इवनिंग सेशन फाइव थर्टी टू सेवन Atul Krishna Prabhu will be there and the last Krishna Nanda Prabhu will be there so hope we are you are all are enjoying and online who are watching hearing they are also getting the benefit shravan utsavs transformation of heart so now we welcome his holiness महाराज बाय चैंटिंग हरे कृष्ण महामंत्र हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा 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 हरे हरे सो महाराज विल बी स्पीकिंग ऑन मैनिफेस्टेशन ऑफ लॉर्ड चैतन्य महाप्रभु मर्सी सो विल बी हियरिंग attentively hari krishna translations are there uh, russia 95 chinese 90 and bengali 92 biranabe jaya radha
Yashodanandana Prajatanaranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ramo Hare Ramo Rama Rama Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ramo, Hare Ramo, Rama Ramo, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ramo, Hare Ramo, Ramo Ramo, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ramo Hare Ramo Rama Ramo Hare 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 Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ramo Hare Ramo 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 Hare 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 
कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे नित्य गोर हरि बो हरि बो हरि बो हरि बो जय जय प्रभु पाद प्रभु पाद प्रभु पाद प्रभु प्रेमानंदे जय ओम विष्णुपाद परमहंस परिव्रजक आचार्य अष्टर सत श्री श्रीमद इस डिवाइन ग्रेस ए सी भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी श्रील प्रभुपाद की इसकॉन फाउंडर आचार्य श्रील प्रभुपाद की नित्य लीला प्रविष्ट ओम विष्णुपाद श्रील भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती ठाकुर श्रील प्रभुपाद की आनंद कोटि वैष्णव वृंद की नम आचार्य श्री हरिदास ठाकुर की प्रेम श्री कहो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्री वासदी गौर भक्तविंद की श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण गोप गोपीना श्याम कुंड राधा कुंड गिरि गोवर्धन की वृंदावन मायापुर धाम की गंगा माए यमन माए की चौसी महारानी भक्ति देवी की युग दर्मा हरि नाम संकीर्तन की ओल ग्लोरीज टू असंबु डिवोटीज ओल ग्लोरीज टू द असंबु डिवोटीज ओल ग्लोरीज टू द असंबु डिवोटीज ओल ग्लोरीज टू श्री गुरु श्री गोरंगा ओल ग्लोरीज टू श्रील प्रभुपाद Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Shrimati Bhakti Vedanta Swamin Iti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Koravani Pricharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschachya Deshatarine Jai Jai Shri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda जय द्वैत चंद्र जय कौर भक्त विंद जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय नित्यानंद जय द्वैत चंद्र जय कौर भक्त विंद Jai Jai Shri Chaitanya Jai Nityananda Jai Dwaita Chandra Jai Kaur Bhakta Vinda So we're speaking on some of the pastimes of the Supreme Personality of Godhead Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who appears in this Kali Yuga for the purpose of establishing the Yuga Dharma, which is Harinam Sankirtan. So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu 
performed his Grihastha Lila. He had his, what we'd call Vidya Vilas, his pastimes of education here in Mayapur Dham. In other words, he grew up here. He spent the first 24 years of his manifest pastimes here in Mayapur. And then at the age of 24, he took sannyas and taking sannyas meant not going home. So he went to most quite 18 years residing in Jagannath Puri, six years traveling around India. And wherever Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went, he was delivering the message of Krishna consciousness. Just as he instructed people to chant the holy name of Krishna, to worship Krishna, and to read the books about Krishna. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did that himself also. He chanted the holy name. He had his own japa mala. And that's why he was convinced to take a servant with him when he went traveling. Initially, he was inclined to just travel alone. But he was told that you need to chant. Somebody has to help you carry your, your few possessions which you have. It will be better if somebody goes with you. So it's noted there in the Chaitanya Charitamrita that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was also chanting the holy name, regular amounts. And uh, he was also hearing the books. He would regularly, when he was in Jagannath Puri, he would go to visit Gadarhar Pandit because Gadarhar Pandit had been his, they'd grown, grown up together here in Mayapur. Gadarhar's home was very near to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's home. And they studied together. So Gadarhar was very deeply attached to the association of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Lord Chaitanya gave him, gave Gadarhar the deity of Tota Gopinath to worship. So those of you who have been to Jagannath Puri, you will see the temple of Tota Gopinath is there, not far away from the temple of Lord Jagannath. So Ch Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would regularly go and visit Gadarhar Pandit there, and Gadarhar would read the Srimad Bhagavatam to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was especially fond of hearing the pastimes of Dhruva Maharaj and Prahlad Maharaj. And he liked to hear from the mouth of Gadarhar Pandit. And worship, so Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told people, chant the holy name of Krishna, he was doing it. He told them, read the books about Krishna, he was doing it. He told them, worship Krishna. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would go and see the deity of Lord Jagannath every day. Every day he would make a point to go and see Lord Jagannath. So going to see the deities is also like worshiping the deity because when we go to see the deity, we will also offer obeisances, we will offer prayers, we may do parikrama around the deities. So in this way, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was teaching all the devotees by his own example. When I spoke a couple of days back, I talked about Shivananda Sain, how he was a very intimate associate of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and he was involved in many pastimes. And I described how he had witnessed the mercy of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in all three different ways. Directly, as empowered incarnations, and by his appearance, although he was in some other place, he could appear from far away. So Shivananda Singh had witnessed these things. 
Shivananda Singh uh, was a grihasta and he had three sons and he would when he would sometimes when he would go to Jagannath Puri he would bring with him his wife and sometimes his sons would also come so it's mentioned in the Chaitanya Charitamrita how Lord Chaitanya would enjoy pastimes with the sons of Shivananda Sen. The oldest son was named Chaitanya Das. So when Lord Chaitanya met the oldest son of Shivananda Sen for the first time, he asked him, What's your name? <laughs> so the little, when the little boy said, Chaitanya Das. And so when Lord Chaitanya heard, that Shivananda Sain had given this name to his eldest son, he asked him, he said, what kind of name is this you have given your son? And Shivananda Sain simply replied, this was the name which came from my heart. I've just simply given the name which appeared in my heart. And... Uh, at one point, Shivananda Sen's wife had conceived the third child. So when Lord Chaitanya heard that Shivananda Sen's wife was expecting a child, he told Shivananda Sen that you can name this next son, you name next son Puri Das. <laughs> Lord Chaitanya was living in Jagannath Puri. So he said, you give your child this name Puri Das. So, when the child was born, Shivananda Sen gave him the name Paramananda. And, uh, however, Lord Chaitanya always jokingly called the child as Puri Das. So, one pastime is described in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, which shows how much Lord Chaitanya loved all of the devotees who were in his Sangha in the association of devotees. Shivananda Sen had taken on so much service for the pleasure of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu because he would personally bring all the devotees there. And Chaitanya Charitamrita also describes to us how Shivananda Sen, on one year when they were going to Jagannath Puri, a dog began to follow them. And Shivananda Sen noticed how this dog is attached to the devotees. He's following the devotees. So at one point the devotees had to cross a river and to get on the boat. The boatman didn't want the dog to come on. So Shivananda Sen personally paid the boatman to allow the dog to come on the boat. And every day, the devotees would give the dog some prasadam. However, it happened at one point, because it would take a couple of weeks for the devotees to get to Jagannath Puri, walking from Mayapur. You know, women and everybody, they wouldn't walk very fast. It would take good time. So, one day, Shivananda Sen was involved talking to the customs at the border and he had to spend time with them. And when he came back, he asked, did you, did you give the dog prasadam? And nobody had taken care to give the dog prasadam. And they looked everywhere, they couldn't find the dog. The dog had disappeared. And when Shivananda Sen saw that the dog had gone away because he had not fed it, he also fasted. He took the responsibility for taking care of the dog, not only the people, but even the dog which followed them. He wanted to make sure they're taken care of. And when the dog didn't get prasadam, he also fasted. He thought, this is not good. This dog definitely had some devotional feelings 
is so strongly attached to the devotees, we should give prasadam. So it's important for us when we are here in the Dham and we go on Parikrama that we also give prasadam to the dogs. Prabhupada said, nobody should go hungry in Mayapur within, was it five kilometers or ten kilometers of the temple? No one should go hungry. And so even during the, this last year with the COVID virus and so much lockdown, the devotees have taken on the responsibility to go out and to distribute prasadam. And many people who are having financial difficulty, there may be no job, no means to earn any living because of the lockdown. So our temple is providing prasadam. We're arranging for people to be able to come and get prasadam. So this is the mood of devotee. Devotees must be very caring. So Shivananda Sen showed this care even for the dog. Of course, it happened that later on they came to Jagannath Puri and when they entered to see Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they were overjoyed to see that the dog, the same dog who had been following them, was already there with Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was throwing pieces of coconut meat, the coconut meat from the inside of the coconut. He was throwing it to the dog, and the dog was taking it. And the dog was chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. The dog was chanting in the dog's way. He was chanting the holy name. And the next day, we didn't see the dog anymore. Everybody understood this dog is already liberated. So this is some of the mercy of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his devotees, that even the animals, four-legged animals, low species like the dogs, they can all get the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and be delivered. So Shivananda Sen came to Jagannath Puri after the young child was born, Puri Das, right? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu jokingly called him Puri Das, but his name was also Paramananda. And later on, he grew up to be a very wonderful devotee and he wrote many books. Right? What was his name? Hmm? Kavi Karnapur. Yeah, Kavi Karnapur. He wrote wonderful books like uh, Ananda Vrindavan Champu and Gora Gor Gonadesh Dipika, which mentions the identities of all the different personalities in Chaitanya Leela, who they are in Krishna Leela. And then he wrote also a wonderful drama. Chaitanya Chandradaya Nataka, which describes one, very wonderfully the meetings between Rupa Goswami and Lord Chaitanya. Different wonderful events, all described in a beautiful, dramatic way. So Kavi Karnapur wrote so many wonderful books, but he was just a little child in the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And it's described that as a small child, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave him his toe to suck on. <laughs> Chaitanya Mahaprabhu put his toe in the little boy's mouth. He could suck on Lord Chaitanya's lotus toe. So, when the boy was about seven, seven years old, he came there and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu requested him, chant the holy name, Puri Das. Chant the holy name. And the little child just looked. He wouldn't, he wouldn't chant the holy name. And Shivananda saying, his father was there. And his father was saying, chant, chant. Mahaprabhu is telling you to chant. Chant the holy name. 
But the little boy is just very silent. He wouldn't chant. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu remarked, he said, I have given the chanting of the holy name all over the planet. Even the living entities which don't move, non-moving living entities like the trees have also chanted the holy name. But I cannot get this little boy to chant the holy name. However, Swarup Damodar was there and Swarup Damodar is the secretary of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in his pastimes in Jagannath Puri. And Swarup Damodar remarked to Lord Chaitanya, he said, no, my Lord, you have already initiated him into the chanting of the holy name. The child is remembering the holy name and he is chanting in his mind. So he just doesn't want to reveal the mantra to everyone, but he is chanting in his mind. So then it happened of a few days later, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came and the little boy was there. So Lord Chaitanya said, Puridas, Puridas, recite, recite, tell us something. And, and the little boy recited a beautiful verse in Sanskrit describing the glory and the beauty of Lord Krishna. And everyone who heard the child speak, they were all amazed because the child composed the verse himself. It wasn't a verse from scripture. The child just immediately composed the verse. Although he was only seven years old and uneducated, he hadn't begun any education, but he was able to compose a beautiful verse describing the glories of the Supreme Lord Krishna. So how is it possible? It's only possible by the unlimited mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu enjoyed these wonderful pastimes with young people. Uh, another great devotee of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Advaita Acharya. Now Advaita Acharya, he was responsible for the Lord's appearance in this world. He called the Lord to come. And Advaita Acharya himself is Vishnu Tattva. He is not an ordinary jiva, but he is Vishnu Tattva. And he is uh, Sadashiva and Mahavishnu. Now Advaita Acharya had six sons. And of his six sons, Three of them were very wonderful devotees of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. The other three, th three sons, they went astray. Although they were brought up to be devotees, they went astray and they became influenced by smarter philosophy. It may be that they were influenced by their own father because at one point their own father was preaching impersonal philosophy. He was preaching the teachings of Yoga Vashista because Advaita Acharya wanted to make Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu angry at him. Lord Chaitanya would always respect Advaita Acharya because Advaita Acharya was so much senior to him by age. So whenever Lord Chaitanya would meet Advaita, he would bow down to him. And Advaita, he understood Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to be the Supreme Lord. He wanted to respect Lord Chaitanya. So Advaita had a plan that he will make Lord Chaitanya angry. So he began to preach the teachings of Yoga Vasishta. Yoga Vashista philosophy glorifies impersonal liberation 
and Brahman. It only speaks about the Brahman and that the goal of life is to get Sayuja Mukti and to merge with the impersonal. So Advaita began preaching like this. And so when news came, then Lord Chaitanya rushed over to Shantipur and he threw Advaita on the ground and beat him physically. And this was very pleasing to Advaita Acharya. But it was very concerned, it was a great anxiety for Advaita Acharya's wife. Mother Sita, the wife of Advaita Acharya, she came running and she pleaded to Lord Chaitanya, no, please don't kill my husband. So Lord Chaitanya told Advaita Acharya that you brought me here, you called me to come. He said, I was sleeping, resting in the spiritual sky and your loud calling brought me here and now you're preaching this impersonal Mayavadi nonsense. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu corrected Advaita Acharya and Advaita Acharya was very pleased to see Lord Chaitanya get so angry at him. So as I said, Advaita Acharya was so much senior to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So after Lord Chaitanya took sannyas, he had come there to Shantipur. Lord Nityananda had tricked him actually. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took sannyas over in Katwa and after taking his sannyas, he immediately wanted to go to Vrindavan. But Lord Nityananda tricked him. Lord Nityananda brought him instead to Shantipur, in the direction of Shantipur anyway. So anyway, Lord Nityananda arranged like this. He wanted Mother Sachi to come and she could see her son as a sannyasi. And he wanted to call all the other devotees because only a few devotees knew that Lord Chaitanya was taking sannyas. Only a few devotees could go with them to Katwa. So Lord Nityananda wanted that all the other devotees would have the opportunity to come there and see him as a sannyasi. Because before Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, as he said, Vidya Vilas, he was a teacher and he had beautiful long hair and wore beautiful nice clothes, but then he became a sannyasi, shaved his head and just a simple dress of the sannyasi, simple cloth. So Lord Chaitanya wanted uh, rather, Lord Nityananda wanted the devotees that they would have this opportunity to see Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as a sannyasi. So Chaitanya Charitamrita describes to us how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came there in Shantipur. So somebody had asked Advaita Acharya that who did Chaitanya Mahaprabhu take sannyas from? And Advaita Acharya replied, Oh, the guru of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was Keshava Bharati. He gave him sannyas. And when the son of Advaita Acharya, the youngest son of Advaita Acharya, not, rather not the youngest, the oldest son, oldest son was called Achutananda. Or sometimes they just say Achuta. So he was a little boy running naked, not even dressed, because he's just a small boy, so just leave him to run around. And when he heard that Bharati, Keshava Bharati is the spiritual master of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the little boy said, if you talk like this, it will ruin the world. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the lord of the three worlds. And if you say, the Keshava Bharati is the spiritual master of him, then this talk will ruin the world. Advaita Acharya was very happy to hear his little boy speak like this. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu showed his affection for this little boy. He picked him up and put him
him on his lap and he spoke to him and said, Achuta, Advaita Acharya is your father. He is also my father. So you and I are brothers. This is how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was relating with the people, with the young children. Even though he's a sannyasi, he was enjoying intimate association with them and showing affection for them. Uh, this little boy Achutananda grew up to also be a very staunch devotee and he went to live in Jagannath Puri and he stayed there in Jagannath Puri. Every year he would take part in the Rathiyatra and he would chant and dance and became a very wonderful devotee. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was giving so much love and affection to everyone, taking care of everybody, concern for their welfare. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has to also travel as a sannyasi. He also, after taking sannyas, he went to Jagannath Puri, but he did not simply stay there. He went to travel. He went all around India and he chose first of all to go to South India. And when he was in South India, he went to Sri Rangam because in Trichinopoly, near to Trichinopoly, is the temple of Lord Ranganath. And that place is called Sri Rangam. And it's the biggest Vaishnava temple. Of all the Vaishnava temples, it's considered the biggest. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went there, visited the temple. And at that time, one of the pujaris there, Venkata Bhatta, he invited Lord Chaitanya to come to his home to take lunch. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is a son. Mayavadi, he had taken sannyas in the line of Shankaracharya. He was not Mayavadi, but he'd taken sannyas in that line. And usually they don't cook, but people will invite. Brahmanas will invite them to their home for meals. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went there to take his food. And at that time, Venkata Bhatta told Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that now is the Chaturmasya. It has just begun. So why don't you stay here with us for four months and give us your association and you can tell us all the topics of Lord Krishna. We will be happy to hear from you, Krishna Kata. Of course, the Venkata Bhatta was a Sri Vaishnava. The Sri Vaishnavas considered Lord Narayan to be the Supreme Personality of Godhead and they consider Lord Krishna to be one of his incarnations. So Venkata Bhatta gave Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu this opportunity to remain there in Sri Rangam and while Lord Chaitanya was staying there his family members would regularly associate with Lord Chaitanya. So one of the persons was the brother of Venkata Bhatta and he, came, he became very attracted to the, te the, mission, the, mess, the teachings of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he eventually left his home and he came to live in Vrindavan. That was Prabodhananda Sarasati. Prabodhananda Sarasati. He wrote also many books, beautiful Sanskrit, Sanskrit poetry. He became a very great devotee. So he came from Lord Chaitanya's visit there at Sri Rangam. But there was another boy, a young child, the son of Venkata Bhatta, named Gopal Bhattacharya. And he was giving some personal service to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, sometimes bringing his food, sometimes washing his cloth, and hearing 
from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So this Gopal Bhatta, he eventually also came to Vrindavan and he came and stayed in Vrindavan with Rupa and Sanatan and he established the temple which we know in Vrindavan as Radha Raman temple. The Raman, Radha Raman deity self-manifested from the Shaligram Shila. So this was Gopal Bhatta. He became the devotee through the direct mercy of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had gone there and stayed at their home for Chaturmas for four months, gave a lot of association, but he got results. He made wonderful devotees, Prabodhananda Sarasati and Gopal Bhatta Goswami. Both came from his visit there in Sri Ranga. Right? When we go out for preaching, there should be some result. You have, there should be some, you know, propaganda work. You, you get results. People start to take interest. They start to be, they start to take up Krishna consciousness. If we just go around everywhere and nothing ever happens and nobody ever becomes a devotee, then it's not very good. Prabhupada used to want to know, how many books have you distributed? How many devotees have you made? How many properties have you acquired? Prabhupada encouraged us that there should be some result in our preaching work, that we can show something. Like, these are the new devotees. We distributed all these books. We're having this new temple. We opened the new temple. So, these things meant something. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also, he was getting results. When he was traveling around preaching, it was not just traveling, but he was also making devotees. Another wonderful devotee he made came when he went to Benares. You can understand Benares. Those of you who have been to Benares, you know what like is Benares. It is not a very pious kind of place. You know, it, people are mostly worshippers of Lord Shiva there. And uh, it's a place of Mayavadis and Buddhists. It's not a very good place for devotees. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had told this one devote, one person, Tapana Mishra, that you go to Benares. What happened was Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, as a householder, had gone traveling to do some teaching work. And he'd gone to Bangladesh. And when he was in Bangladesh, he had met this one man named Tapana Mishra. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's family name is also Mishra, right? His father's name, Jagannath Mishra. So, Tapan Mishra, not a relative, but same name, Brahman. So, uh, Tapana Mishra came to meet Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Although Chaitanya Mahaprabhu at this time was a grihasta, he had come there and he asked him for advice. He said, I've been reading many scriptures and I don't know what is the real goal of life. But I've been told somehow in a dream that you can guide me. So he had come to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to take instruction. At this time, Chaitanya is known as Nimai Pandit. And Nimai Pandit told the man, he said, Yes, told him, you know, chant, chanting the holy name and worshipping Krishna. So the, the man was very attracted to Lord Chaitanya and he thought, can I come to Mayapur? I want to be with you in Mayapur. But Lord Chaitanya told him, no, don't come to Mayapur. You go to Benares 
and I will meet you there in Banaras. Now at this time, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was still a householder. He hadn't taken sannyas yet. But he told the man, you go to Banaras, I will meet you in Banaras. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu indicates by this that he was aware that in the future he's going to take sannyas, he's going to renounce and he's going to go to visit these different places. So Tapana Mishra had done that. He had taken this instruction. He left Bangladesh and he came to Banaras and stayed there in Banaras. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had taken sannyas and he's going to Vrindavan. On his way to Vrindavan, he goes to Banaras. And when he's there in Banaras, he stays in the home of Chandrasekhar Acharya and he would take his food in the home of Tapana Mishra. So Tapana Mishra had one son named Raghunath Bhatta Charya. So this son of Tapana Mishra was also serving Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to Banaras twice on his way to Vrindavan and then after coming from Vrindavan again came back and stayed there. At that time he stayed a little longer because he instructed Sanatana Goswami. Sanatana Goswami had come there in Banaras and he had instructed him for two months in the science of devotional service. So it was at this time the son of Tapana Mishra, Raghunath, Raghunath was giving service to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Again, simple service, bring the food, maybe wash clothes sometimes, accompany Chaitanya Mahaprabhu if he wants to go somewhere. And he be the child became very attached to Lord Chaitanya. When he grew up a little bit, he also went to see Lord Chaitanya because Lord Chaitanya, we said he was traveling around India for six years and then after that, then 18 years were spent residing in Jagannath Puri. So the child, Tapana Mishra's son, had grown up and he again, he wants to see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is just staying in Jagannath Puri. So he came there to Jagannath Puri. He came there and he resided with Lord Chaitanya for eight months in Jagannath Puri. And of course, Lord Chaitanya gave him a lot of mercy, had a lot of association with him. And he encouraged him, you go home and stay with your parents until they leave this world. And then after they leave this world, then you can go to Vrindavan and stay with Rupa and Sanatan. So Raghunath Bhatta, he had been staying with Lord Chaitanya for eight months and turned, he was a very wonderful devotee. He could sing beautifully and he could also cook very nice. So the Vaishnava arts, these are Vaishnava qualities to sing and play instruments, sing beautiful songs, glorifying Krishna, and to be able to cook also, to prepare nice foodstuffs to offer to Lord Krishna. It's a Vaishnava art. So Raghunath Bhatta was very expert in this. He would do this kind of service. So he stayed for eight months in Jagannath Puri and then went back to Benares to be with his parents, elderly parents. After his elderly parents left the world, he went to Vrindavan. And he stayed there in Vrindavan, became a Goswami. And Lord Chaitanya had instructed him. So the devotees were very happy 
to hear about all the association he had with Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Raghunath was such a wonderful devotee that when he would recite Srimad Bhagavatam, he could recite each and every sloka in three or four different tunes, different melodies, different meters. So that was a wonderful art which he had acquired to be able to recite all the different slokas of Srimad Bhagavatam in different meters, different melodies for the pleasure of the devotees. So everyone loved him and he had wonderful qualities. He would never hear any criticism of anyone. If anybody would talk any prajalpa, he would just go away. He would not stay to hear and he would never hear anybody criticized. So he shows us how uh, to be a good devotee, what kind of qualities we should try to acquire. To hear about Lord Krishna and not to hear prajalpa, and never to hear any criticism of anyone. So Raghunath Bhatta Goswami, uh, one of the six Goswamis, again by the mercy of Lord Chaitanya, going there, meeting the young boy, giving him mercy and inspiring him to take up Krishna consciousness in a full-time manner. This is preaching how these people became devotees by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy. They all came to Krishna consciousness. Just like we told how Rupa and Sanatan, that Rupa and Sanatan described themselves, that they, they were saying, we are more sinful than Jagai and Madhai. But Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accepted them and made them Goswamis and sent them to Vrindavan to excavate the pastimes of Lord Krishna and to establish beautiful temples for the worship of Lord Krishna. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, his preaching brought wonderful results. But at the same time, he is very human. He's not just in the world that, oh, I'm a big sannyasi, don't come near me and don't bother me. He is very much concerned with everyone. One very nice pastime which took place with Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came uh, when the devotees from Srikanda came to visit Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. There are different villages around here. We, nowadays, you know, everything is industrialized and urbanized. People have all gone to live in Calcutta and Delhi and Bombay. But in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's time, the people lived in the villages. And the villages were not poverty stricken, as we may think today. But the villages were, was where all the wealth is. Because it's in the villages where people are doing the agriculture and they're producing the grains and they have the cows. And so the, the people were rich. And Prabhupada also describes how in the times of Lord Krishna, Nanda Maharaj and all the Brijbasi people, they were not poor people. They were very wealthy people because they had cows. And from cows they had all the milk products, the ghee and the cheese and the yogurt as, as well as milk. And they had the bulls to plow the fields and produce grains. So the people in the villages were not poor as we think today. But in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's time they were very wealthy. So the different villages was where the activities were and there were many great devotees just like we said Trikanda was one village and, the and when they would all go to Jagannath Puri for Rathiatra 
Each village had their own kirtan team. So there were seven different kirtan teams around the chariot of Lord Jagannath. And each village would have their own kirtan. And they'd have the people from the village there. They'd have somebody leading and somebody else dancing. And other people, madanga players, and then the kartal players. In this way, the kirtan was very nicely organized. So Sri Kanda was one such village. They came there to visit Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So there were wonderful devotees from Sri Kanda. Uh, there were, their names were, there was Nara Hari Sakur, Makunda Sakur, and Raghunandan Thakur. So Raghunandan was the son of Makunda. And Makunda and Nara Hari they were brothers and they were all devotees they'd all come for ratiatra nara hari actually he was he was a, a spiritual master and he was the guru of lochandas thakur lochandas who wrote the chaitanya mangal the book which we call chaitanya mangal and we sing also that song baja hari mana lochandas so Lochandas, he was a disciple of this Nara Hari Sakar, and he was the brother of Makunda, and Makunda had a son named Raghunandan. So this Raghunandan was a very, very special devotee. He's called Raghunandan Thakur. Jaipataka Swami told us one time how they wanted to call Prabhupada Thakur. But Prabhupada said, no, no, that's not. He said, I haven't done anything much. He said, that's for people who are very, very special. Very, very great devotees. They are called Thakur. They get the title Thakur. He said, that's not for me. So uh, this Raghunandan, he got the title Thakur. As a young child, he had been told by his father to make the offering to the deity. His family had a Gopinath deity. And the father had to go away because Father Mukunda, he was a physician. He was a Vaidya. The whole family were Vaidyas. You know, kind of like a family profession. Just like we know in China, you often find people from the one family, they're all doctors. So similarly in India, you have people like that, that the family are all doctors, they're all Vaidyas, uh, Ayurvedic doctors, not Western medicine, but Ayurvedic. So, Makunda was a physician, or a, a Vaidya, or a, a doctor, if you like. And uh, he, he used to give consultation to even the, the Muslim ruler he would be called to give consultation to the Muslim ruler. So it's described that on one occasion when he was with the Muslim ruler that they brought a fan, a peacock fan, to fan the Muslim ruler. And when just seeing the peacock feather, Mukunda became affected and his ecstatic love for Krishna awakened and he fell down and he collapsed on the ground. And the Mohammedan, the Mohammedan ruler was shocked that, oh, what's wrong? And the Mohammedan ruler got down from his throne and he came over to find out, are you all right? What happened? And Makunda tried to make an excuse. He said, oh, it, it's, it's some kind of disease I have, like epilepsy. That sometimes, you know, if you have epilepsy, sometimes when there's a lot a sound or something, you can just fall down unconscious. If you're an epileptic, then you're not supposed to drive because it's very dangerous. Because at any time, you can, you can just fall, you can collapse unconscious. So Makunda tried to explain like this. But the Mohammedan ruler was more intelligent and he could understand that it's not exactly like that. It's something else. It may be something due to this peacock feather. Anyway, Makunda had to go away for one day, so he told his son, you do the offering today. 
So the little boy, Raghunandan, was left alone and he got every, made everything ready and brought the plate in and offered it to the deity. And then he asked the deity, Gopinath, you please eat. And the little boy, Raghunandan, became a bit worried because nothing was happening. The deity was not eating. So he became worried and he began to really coerce, to force the deity. Gopinath, you have to eat. Gopinath, please eat. If you don't eat, my father will be angry with me. You please eat. So, finally, the deity ate. Because the child, Raghunandan, was very, very pure child, very great devotee, and he conquered Krishna by his pure love. Right? We say Krishna is Ajita, he's never conquered, but he is conquered by the pure love of his devotees. So he became conquered by the love of Raghunandan and he began to, he ate the offering. So that night when Makunda came home, he asked his son, did you make the offering? So Raghunandan said, yes, made the offering, father. So then his father said, bring me some prasadam, let me taste what you offered. But the boy said, there's no prasadam. Deity at everything. There's nothing left. Deity at everything. So Makunda was surprised because he knew this Raghunandan does not tell lies. He's a very good boy. He always speaks the truth. So he was puzzled. He thought it's unusual because, you know, you offer to the deity, usually there'll be prasad. So, he said, anyway, another time, told Raghunandan, make the offering again, Raghunandan, you make the offering again. And this time, Makunda was hiding, and he was watching. And he saw Raghunandan go in this time. The offering was ladu. And he, Raghunandan went in with the ladu to offer to Krishna. And he saw, he saw Krishna take a bite from the ladu. And when Krishna took a bite from the ladu, Makunda came out. He, was, oh, he saw how Krishna had been eating the ladu. The half-eaten ladu was still in the hand of the deity. This deity is still worshipped today. You can go there to Sri Kanda. The deity is of Gopinath is there. The deity which ate the offering of Raghunanda. So Makunda was very, very happy, you know, that, wow, this is wonderful. Just imagine that my son is such a wonderful devotee that he could get Lord Krishna to eat the offering. So it happened that these three persons were all there with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Jagannath Puri. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu asked, Makunda. He said, Makunda, are you, are you the son of Raghunandan or is Raghunandan your son? This is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's humor. You see, he's joking. Of course, he knows that actually Makunda is the seminal father of Raghunandan. But he asked Makunda, he said, are you the son of Raghunandan or is Rag Raghunandan your son? And Makunda replied to Lord Chaitanya, he said, yes. He said, I am the son of Raghunandan. Because of Raghunandan, I have increased my own faith in Lord Krishna. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, yes. This is correct. That one who gives you Krishna, he should be considered your father, your spiritual father, your senior, because he has given you that love for Krishna. So you th think of that person like your 
spiritual father. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was very pleased and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave them each instruction. He told them what they should do. He told Raghunandan, he said, your business is to serve the deity because you're always, you're, so, you're very much in love with the deity, the deity loves you, so your duty is to serve the deity. And he told Makunda, your duty is continue as a doctor. You give service to people, your patients come to you, give service to them, cure their diseases. And in this way, you can maintain the family. And he told Narahari, your service is to go with the devotees. You go and travel and go for preaching. So it seems like they all had different services, but they're all equal. There's no difference. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was just engaging everyone according to their individual natures. Some person's nature is to be with the deities, some person's nature is to work, and some person's also is preacher. But it's all service to Krishna. Whatever you do, it's in the service of Krishna. So that is Krishna consciousness. It's not that you have to give up work. Sometimes people think, I have to give up my job, I have to become full-time devotee. This is not required. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught, Stane stita shruti gatan tan van manobir ye prayaso jita jitopi asita istrilokya. You simply stay in whatever position you are in. And in this way you can conquer Lord Krishna. You don't have to change anything. Just stay in whatever situation you are in and hear about Krishna in the association of devotees and in this way conquer Krishna because Krishna is conquered by that loving attitude, by that mood of giving service. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had so many wonderful servants surrounding him. We talked about Shivananda saying, a little bit we spoke about Advaita Acharya. Another wonderful servant was Morari Gupta. Morari Gupta, he was also a Vaidya. He was also a doctor. And his home, of course, is not very far away from our own Mayapur temple. And they've established the deities of Sitaram Lakshman Hanuman there nowadays. Because initially, Murari Gupta, he was a devotee of Lord Ramachandra. And Murari Gupta had witnessed the childhood Leela of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was a small child, he would come and sometimes Murari Gupta would just touch Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, just touch the hand of the child and he could feel, ah, oh, he could feel oh, some very special mystical potency was possessed by the child. He could understand this child is not ordinary. He's a very, very special child. So Chaitan Morari Gupta kept a diary of all the different events which took place in the life of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Uh, particularly his Leela here in Mayapur because Morari Gupta as a resident here in Mayapur he witnessed all of the childhood pastimes so he kept his diary and that diary was very important for all the people who wrote biographies about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu People like Krishna Das Kaviraj and Lochan Das Thakur and Vrindavan Das Thakur, they could all take advantage of the diaries of Marari Gupta because he had kept, he would recorded all of the events. He would seen everything. So 
he did a very wonderful service by keeping these diaries. And he also enjoyed very intimate association with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He said Chaitanya Mahaprabhu sometimes would come and want something for indigestion. So Marari Gupta could heal people's material disease as well as their spiritual diseases. Marari Gupta, he had witnessed all of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's lila and he understood that at some point the Lord is going to leave this world because he knows, he knew how Lord Rama had appeared and then disappeared and Lord Krishna had appeared and disappeared. So he understood that at some point Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is also going to leave this world. So Marari Gupta was thinking that he would commit suicide. He thought, I don't want to be here when the Lord leaves the world. I want to leave before he goes. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is omniscient. He knows everything. He knew the mind of Marari Gupta. So he came to Marari Gupta and he told Marari Gupta, you give that knife to me. I know you've got this knife and I know what you're planning to do. So you give that knife to me. I don't want you to keep it. <laughs> In this way, Marari Gupta was defeated by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Another pastime which took place a little bit relating to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Leela was that uh, Shivananda Sain had brought Lord Chaitanya to his home to take food and he'd arranged for very opulent prasadam. He'd purchased all the most opulent prasadam from P the Jagannath Puri temple. And Lord Chaitanya wanted to please his devotee so he, he accepted it, but after eating it, then he felt, you know, heavy that, oh, it's difficult to digest everything. So it happened that Ch uh, Shivananda Sen, his son, Chaitanya Das, he was very intelligent. And he arranged that the next day, he also invited Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to lunch and he arranged a very special lunch. He arranged things like lime and ginger and yogurt, all very nice things to ease the digestion of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came and he saw how the boy had arranged all these things like ginger and lime and yogurt, and they thought this boy is very intelligent. And Mahaprabhu took the food there and he was able to relieve his indigestion. And so we see so many wonderful devotees coming to Krishna consciousness just by the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. We were hearing about the importance of his humility, how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is so humble and so loving and so caring even for the, the children. He wants to make sure they're also getting Krishna consciousness. There was a, an incident which took place that when they were coming to Jagannath Puri one time, Shivananda Sen had his party had to, they were all waiting because it took some time to deal with the officials at one border crossing. And Lord Nityananda became a little angry. In fact, he had to wait so long that when Shivananda Sen came and offered his obeisances, Lord Nityananda kicked him on the head. So when Lord Nityananda kicked him on the head, he, he, to, he told him that I'm hungry, you've kept me waiting so long, you didn't feed me so long, we haven't had anything to eat, we're out here 
waiting, nowhere to stay, you're not taking care of us. So Lord Shivananda Sen immediately took care, arranged everything, and then he, he personally thanked Lord Nityananda that thank you so much for you've given me the dust from your lotus feet on my head. I feel so fortunate to be blessed with the dust of your lotus feet that I know that even demigods like Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva, they would hanker to get the dust from your lotus feet and you've kindly placed it on my head. So that today is my greatest fortune. Thank you so much. And when Lord Nityananda heard him talk like that, Lord Nityananda embraced him. However, there were some other people, there were some nephews there of Shivananda Sen, and they were not so, they were disturbed when they saw Lord Nityananda seemingly become angry due to his hunger. And they left the party and they went ahead to Jagannath Puri. And when Lord Chaitanya saw them, Lord Chaitanya could understand something is wrong with these two boys. Something has happened. So Lord Chaitanya arranged, take care of them, give them prasadam, take care of them. And when, when they all, all the other devotees came, then Lord Chaitanya, or he, he told his servant, he said, make sure that Shivananda Sen and his family members, every day they should be given the remnants of my prasadam. You know, when Prabhupada was here, usually Prabhupada's prasadam would be taken, well, sannyasis especially, they would get first, right? You have to give the sannyasis first. But Lord Chaitanya was so caring that he said, my remnants every day, it should go to Shivananda Sen's wife and family. They have to get my remnants. So these are just some examples from the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to show us all about his wonderful mercy and his loving and caring for all the devotees. Let us all try to develop the same kind of love and appreciation for each other just as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had for all of his devotees. So thank you all very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki Go Rangar!